Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is the file connector for the workflow service plan SKU in Logic App Standard. Let's go. All right, so this has been a big ask for this file connector support in Logic App Standard and more specifically in the workflow service plan. Now, we've had a file connector for quite some time, for years, and uh, it's been of the Azure or managed file connector manner, which means you're typically gonna use an on-premise data gateway to be able to connect, especially when we talk about an on-prem file share, you're gonna go ahead and, and use the, the gateway. Uh, naturally, when we have Logic App Standard, we have the opportunity to use built-in connectors which just allows for more, more throughput, I'd say some simplicity, you don't have to have gateways, things of that nature, and you can directly communicate with these file shares. Now, we did release this connector a little while ago, but it, it was only supported in ACE v3 configurations. And so naturally, we've got a lot of customers that are just using the workflow service plan SKU, and they you know wanted to use this connector. And the reason why we saw this uh, delay uh, this variance in terms of when things are available was that there were some security requirements we needed to deal with and so naturally we don't want to put out an insecure file connector so we had to work through those needs and now we've got something that shipped and you can see here on the about tab that it is uh, in production so uh, you're ready to go use this this connector now, if we think about the different operations that you'll find on the trigger side, we've got when a file is added and also when a file is added or updated. So you'll be able to go ahead and use those to kick off your workflows. And then here on the right hand side, we've got all of the actions. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and go through these one by one, but I think you'll see some familiar operations here and generally should be able to satisfy your requirements by using these different actions. All right, so there are some prerequisites that we do need to go ahead and uh, call out here. So number one is you do need a VNet connectivity in order to go ahead and use this. It seems pretty self-explanatory. You're, you're not gonna be exposing your network file shares over the public internet. So that's not a good idea regardless. So either way, you should use a VNet. In this case, you're gonna have to use a VNet so that we can use the correct protocol when communicating to that file share. So I'm not gonna go through that configuration in this video. I will put a link in the description. I already have a video that talks more about VNets. Now, a couple other things to be aware of. So we do have a, an environment variable, basically like an app setting to enable the communication here. So it's called website content, or sorry, content over vnet and the value you need to set that to is one so wagner has has called this out in his blog post that's available in tech community i'll make sure to get a a link to this article and put it in the description as well and then the other piece here i just talked about the communication protocol and we are using the smb protocol for this communication and so when you've got a network service group in the mix, uh, you do need to allow port 445 from Logic Apps to your VNet to ensure that this connector can access the right resources and to be able to write data and also naturally be able to listen for data as well. So that is something to be aware of. And then I'll also include this link in the description as well. This was the original blog post that we did put out and this, had, this was when the connector was only available for the app service environment. I think there's some things in here that apply to the workflow service plan as well. It is after all the same connector. It was more of the underlying runtime and that connectivity to be available. So otherwise, you know, you're gonna find the similar experience and some of the same requirements. So I'll leave a link to that as well. Now, one thing just to, to be aware of, and so what I've done here is in the Logic App that I'm using here, I'm gonna go ahead and use the storage that is available to my local Logic App. So if you're in a corporate environment, you likely have a network share that has already been 
connected to Azure through Express Route or VPN, and you've got that VNet pairing taking place, and uh, you know, you've already got that file share set up for you. Now, for me, for the purposes of this demo, I didn't have that set up. So what I'm using is the local storage that is available on the VM that is hosting my particular Logic app. Now, if you want to go ahead and use this, and you're probably going to use this more for demo purposes than anything else, um, but here's kind of how you would go ahead and set up your connection. The root folder is you want to provide C mounts and then file system. And so what this will then do is this is a, a file mount that gets created under the hood that you can go ahead and take advantage of. So, you know, if you're just looking to try this out, you want to use the same storage as your VM, then go ahead and, and use this. Now, in production scenarios, use the proper network file share that, you know, your corporate IT group is, is giving you. Provide a connection name, that's self-explanatory, call it whatever you want. And then naturally we need to provide some credentials that allow you to go ahead and communicate with this file share. So, you know, the typical, you know, Windows login approach, use a domain, backslash, your username, and your password, and go ahead and provide that, and then you should be able to go ahead and create a connection. Now, if you're interested in seeing, like, the underlying file system itself, you can go ahead and access Kudo, which is uh, basically, you know, a, a part of the, the Azure platform itself, but we do have a launch point out of the Azure portal that allows you to go ahead and look for these files. I'll show you that in, a, in just a minute, but this is where you'd be able to go ahead and see files. If you want to upload files, you can easily go ahead and drag and drop them using your web browser, which is pretty slick. So let's go in, let's just uh, see a bit of a demo and uh, we'll take it from there. All right, first I'll show you that Kudo. Uh, I'm in the Logic app here. I go down to development tools, click advanced tools, then click on go. When I go ahead and do that, I see this experience. So that's the same experience that we saw in the screenshot. Then what you can go ahead and do is click on debug console and then CMD. And this will take you essentially to the root of, or see home of your, the VM that's hosting the logic app. So just go ahead and do a CD backslash, then go ahead and type in CD mounts. And then here I'm going to use the CD file system. So this is kind of that base path. This is what I would have put in my connection. And then from within here, I just created my own folder called Kent. So I can go ahead and uh, navigate into there. And then here I've got a file, which I will use in my demo. And then I also have an output folder. So let's go into output. Let's just do a DIR. And we do have an existing file. So I don't want to have a cause of conflict here. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete star. And now I've got an empty output folder. Okay, so let's now head back into the logic app. And here I'm just going to expose an HTTP request. And then I'm just going to show you just a couple operations. So we're going to use the list files and subfolders in a folder. And in this case, we're just going to use that folder here called Kent. So we head back here, we go up, we can see that we've got a file here called order file. Now, but I'm going to use this in the demo. So just to add a little variety here, we're going to get a list of files or end folders that are found in this Kent folder. And then we're going to loop through them. And then we're just going to go ahead and do a check. And if we find that the name of one of these files is equal to orderfile.json, then what we're going to go ahead and do is copy the file. And we'll copy it from the source path and into the destination path. So here I've got that output. And I've just appended a .sig. Uh, it's a signal file, you know, something I've used in the past. So just to show you that this is, you know, I, that capability, I can rename things if I want. And then here we've just got this, you know, response. We're just going to re return um, the acknowledgement back. So here, let's go in and we're just going to run this. So I'll just go ahead and click this run. And so we can see that it's running and it should, it's finished already. So if we click on run history, we will go ahead and see that we were able to list the files and subfolders. And so here we've got our file. And then we also have a folder. You can see there's some metadata here. Is folder is true, is folder is false. So that's cool. 
Then we're going to loop through that list. And in the first iteration, we do actually find that file. And so we're going to go ahead and copy that over to the destination. In the second iteration, we find that, you know, that isn't satisfied, the condition, and that's it. So we should now have a file sitting on our file system that can be picked up by our receive logic app. So let's go ahead and check out our receive logic app. So here I did something very quite simple. So I'm going to go ahead and look to see that there is a file in the output folder. And if there is, I'm just going to go ahead and write the file name in this compose action. So let's head over to run history. Let's see what happened here. And sure enough, we've got, this is the run. Uh, let's go ahead and click into this and we can see that you know we did pick up a file from this location we can see the name of the file if we head over to our compose that is where we write it so i know file connectors in 2024 uh, shouldn't be super exciting but i do know that there was a lot of interest in this becoming available the reality is, is we still have file-based integrations you know, in 2024. So there you are. Uh, go ahead and try this out. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video.